Hi guys, I'm Kaylee from Love Learning Every Day and I have another homeschool update for you. If you are new to these homeschool updates, just keep in mind they are very informal. Um, so I'm just gonna film this in one go and then put it straight on YouTube. And that's just so it can be more raw and real and kind of get my thoughts to you guys as soon as possible. Um, and yeah, so just bear with me if it takes me a little bit to think of what I'm gonna say or if I trip over my words or anything like that. Um, but hopefully you guys still get all of my thoughts in a well packaged <laughs> away um, and it doesn't bother you guys too much. Um, but yeah, if you are completely new to this channel, I have a three-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son and I homeschool them both. Um, yeah, and then the general flow of this time is we're gonna do a general update, which really there is not much to update on, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and then uh, we're gonna be talking about together school. So that's morning basket, read alouds. Um, I'm gonna give a little update on Torchlight Pre-K. And then we're gonna be talking about my daughter's school which she is three, but she does more kindergarten-ish work. And then uh, my son's school, which he is six, but he does more second, third grade-ish work. And uh, then I have a bunch of recommendations for you. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's kind of get into it. So general update, I said last time, I don't really know where our future is gonna take us or like what job my husband is gonna do. And because he is currently military, he is up for re-enlistment. We are trying to decide <laughs> uh, what's the best choice. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, there's even a possibility I won't be homeschooling anymore. And it's really hard for me to plan for the future because right now is like key getting really excited for next year type of planning, even though it's so early. It like, it just, it's very fun for me. <laughs> um, and I can't really do that. So we still don't know. We're still figuring it out and we will see. I, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you guys have ever been like a military family, did you stay in? Did you get out? This is uh, the first time. So <laughs> a little bit of a funny story, I guess. Funny now that we're looking back on it, but definitely not funny at the time. This is going to be his uh, second reenlistment if he does decide to go through it. The first reenlistment, um, we were so excited. We were going to go to Germany. I think it was right at the beginning of this channel. So you probably... Uh, heard that in some of our updates. We were very excited about going to Germany. And then his unit decided, nope, actually we need you to deploy because you're the only one that is already deployed that knows how to do it, whatever. Um, so then he was stop lost and had to do that. And uh, when he came back from deployment, we found out my daughter had uh, hip dysplasia and she had to be have a cast and stuff and we were no longer able to go to Germany. So <laughs> I think because of that, and then we had to, yeah, we, we didn't get to do anything that we wanted to do and kind of put in this assignment that's not great. <laughs> um, so we're very apprehensive about re-enlisting again, even for a particularly like really cool assignment or anything, because we know like it can go away <laughs> like that. So yeah, who knows, who knows what we're going to do, but we, we, we've definitely been screwed by the by the military before so I don't yeah okay um but in any case <laughs> let's talk about together school but I would love to know uh your guys's thoughts if you've if you uh are in the military are you staying in or your family's military or did you get out and why uh, I would just love to know but um okay so first let's talk about read alouds because that's always the first part of our day um after our like weird but true or that's still what we're doing right now, which is a fun science show. Uh, they always watch that first. And then we do read aloud. So let's talk about them. So first, uh, Matilda, we are not done with this yet, but we are almost done, I think. Let's see. We are, sorry. I, I haven't kept a bookmark with this one and I don't know why. <laughs> I haven't really needed to, I guess. But yeah, so we're about this far done and honestly I was really surprised because I am not familiar with the story of Matilda at all um I've never seen the movie I've never read the book and I was like I uh, thought there was like some sort of magic in this and there was no magic until today we finally got to some sort of weird thing happened so I thought that was really weird that so much of the book was just regular but I am enjoying this one I don't know if it was later edited just like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the reason why it's not very problematic is because 
they edited out the bad parts of it. So I'm, I wonder if since this one's so popular, if it was edited as well, although I have no idea. But so far there really haven't been anything. There's been some like fat shaming that's, you know, not fun. And in general, the adults are really, really terrible. So that's also, you know, if you don't wanna read a book like that, then definitely don't suggest this for sure. But we are liking it and it's fun. I love reading as Miss Trunchbull. It's fun to just, you know, get your yelling out and be all silly and wacky. But they do say some pretty crazy and pretty harmful things. Um, but my kids just find it funny right now. But if you have more sensitive kids, uh, particularly with like name calling and stuff, um, then this might not be the right choice for you. But so far we are really liking this one. Um, okay, and then the hobbit i know i shared this with you guys at the beginning of the year because we were reading it <laughs> um but actually my husband is reading this so he reads this at nighttime with them uh we just got it back from the library i don't know why we didn't buy this when we've been reading this for like six months now you would think that at this point we would just oh i have no idea what the i don't know if the bookmark left but in any case we're mostly done yeah i can't tell where the bookmark is but we are like three quarters done of with the hobbit and i feel fine about it i think there's a lot of detail in the book that can really it really bogs down the story honestly and i think and it's not my type of story anyway i'm not a big fantasy reader um but we are enjoying it it is nice that we can watch the movies with it we're about to get to the second movie to where we can watch the second movie so we'll probably do that this weekend um and yeah because we read like the first third of the book I think it's the first six chapters and then we watch the movie and now we're about to be done with chapter 12 and then we'll watch the movie um and then there's seven more chapters but they're all very short and then we'll watch the last movie um but yeah so this is this is fine I think I think it is fine I think I do feel bad for my husband because I think he suffers from uh you know like when you have a substitute teacher in school and you just the sub is constantly being told like that's not, that's not how our teacher does it. That's not how we do it. And I feel like uh, that's kind of why they're suffering reading through this. Um, Cause they're just not used to it. Like they're just, it's just different, you know, uh, hearing somebody else read aloud when they're so used to me reading aloud. Cause my husband really does do a great job, but I think this story is a little slow and a little boring, uh, you know? <laughs> um, and yeah, and I think just having somebody else read aloud is a little bit different, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be glad to finish it. And I think it's nice. That's also a scratch off for us. Both of those are scratch offs. We have a, like a hundred books to read, um, like poster scratch off, uh, for kids. And yeah, both of those are on there. So that'll be nice. We finished Heart and Soul and I absolutely loved this one. Uh, my son loved it too. He always picked this one to read first, um, when it was her, his turn to pick. And my goodness, guys, I know I showed this to you last time, but these illustrations are so gorgeous. Um, and each chapter, they're relatively short. They're like two or three, like full pages of text. Um, so quite a bit, but the narrator has such a like fun old lady voice. Um, so it's, it's just, it's just nice to read it. Um, and I think it gives you a really good general overview of, of U.S. history as well that I really liked. And it really just showcases that, uh, black people were an integrated integral part of you know everything in 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 every part of you of u.s history you know so i really really liked this one highly suggested um and i have more black history books to share with you guys um at the end so but right now we're just talking about read alouds and then this one is animal tracks this is our next read aloud uh we kind of decided that we're going to be doing um a fiction and non-fiction pick and this I can just pick a couple this is actually a torchlight pre-k pick I think it was one of the but yeah I think it was one of the, the not the main ones but one of the extra ones and we really like this one I do think it's a little annoying that they don't have like an actual picture because they just have like an outlined picture of what the animal looks like but it has a lot of really fun facts and shows you the size and it keeps getting bigger and bigger as you go and yeah, super cool. Uh, so that's our one right now and they absolutely love it. So I think we're gonna switch between like kind of science-y stuff and history stuff and, you know, I don't know, but like nonfiction picks with it. So if you have any really good nonfiction books, um, I would love to hear it for sure. Okay, and then 
let's talk about advocate uh morning basket which i forgot to bring the abacus up which is really frustrating because i thought i was going to be so prepared i brought so many things up here to show you guys but um so i might just have to show you that later but morning basket has really become kind of just memorization for us for the most part uh right now we're going to be doing more stuff later but right now we just memorize a couple verses verses sounds biblical but no <laughs> um we are secular so we memorize a couple like poems and other helpful things as you guys know probably we we always sing the state song for whatever reason i feel like that has come up most in my life <laughs> Uh, for memorization is like singing the state song like that has come up a surprising amount of time um and yeah I absolutely love doing that so we do that and then we do um a couple just fun I try to make them somewhat moral or funny um rhyming type of things I can get into more of our memory work if you guys want um and then now we've recently started in the last couple weeks or so maybe longer than that I don't know but um doing memory work with an abacus so I can show you more in detail but in general like moving stuff over so I have my daughter count to 20 on the abacus just you know going one two three four five you know and then she'll have to count by twos to 20 and she'll do tens to 100 and then my son will do like fives threes fours you know and I think that's just a really good way to really visualize it because my son is going to be doing multiplication soon like really soon I think um and I think it's a good way just to be able to visualize it really easy and clearly. And um, yeah, so I, I highly suggest that. And I'll, I'll try to show you guys better. Maybe I'll show it to you. And I'm trying to film a day in the life, a day in the life soon. So um, yeah, and let me know if you guys would like to see a day in the life, like a full day, um, including like bedtime and stuff, or if you just really care about homeschooling, or if you want both at some point, um, just let me know whatever you would like and about how long you want that to be. Because really, you know, it's a full day that I'm trying to squeeze into a certain amount of time. And I don't know what times people prefer because honestly, for me, I really like long videos, but, uh, I know a lot of people prefer short. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, just give me Give me any advice you have. And then Torchlight Pre-K. So I think we're pretty much done with it. I think we're just going to finish out the the um, book choices. Because I do like the book choices. The like just little picture books. And honestly, I probably like two thirds of the book choices. Some of them I find really boring or really like eh. Like fine. And then a lot of them we've read already. Um, but... I do, I do like them enough that I'm going to keep ordering them from our library and getting them. And I think that's it that we'll do. We might try to go through like quickly the emotions and stuff. Um, and there's some things that we've been using, like we've always used the more, um, the like meditation cards and stuff that are in there. Um, like we had those before the program. So there's certain things that we're still doing and I, that I still like, uh, their art, their pre-K art program, which I don't think I have here. I think it's in our morning basket. But it's just like, it's art lab for little kids, I think. And I do really love that. So we're going to keep doing projects like that. But I just, I don't care enough to read like a little poem here and a little thing here. And they all don't tie together. And it's just kind of a waste of my time. And I just want to finish up so that we can either go to the next thing, which I don't know if we're doing, or what. Like, I, I don't know. Because it's hard to know. It's hard to know if we're doing Torchlight K and Build Your Library Zero. That was my original... Thing that I thought we were going to do and I don't know if we're doing that now because well one I don't know if we're going to homeschool next year I'm pretty sure we are it seems like most choices seem like we're still going to homeschool um but you know who knows who knows what happens and the other thing is I don't know where we're going to move and right now we have a great library system so if we stay here then I'll probably still do that because our library has all of the choices but that's the number one complaint people have and just because I haven't been like thrilled with Torchlight Pre-K, I don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on the obscure book list for Torchlight K um, and then not really like it, <laughs> you know? So it, it probably depends on if I'm actually going to do those things depending on <laughs> if we have a good library system or not. If I'm, if I'm not able to find the books, then I might not even do it at all. <laughs> I don't know. Um, which makes me sad because I really thought I was going to love this and I and I still might, I still might really like the other ones and it might just be pre-K is not for me. Um, 
but yeah in which case I don't know if I'll do just build your library zero because I know a lot of those books are easy to find um or at least easier to find she picks more like classics kind of um but still like really good ones so I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do or maybe yeah who knows <laughs> um yeah I just really need to figure out what we're doing <laughs> with my life um but yeah so that's everything for together school now let's talk about um yeah let's talk about my daughters so like I said she's three but she's doing kindergarten work um kind of early kindergarten fair definitely she's like learning to read right now so it's not like end of the year kindergarten right now um but honestly it might be soon she is catching up like crazy I'm so surprised she's doing better than my son did at this age although I wasn't very consistent and I think with the second child they're exposed to so much more that it's hard to say you know it's hard to say like if it's all natural or if it's being exposed to more things um type of thing but in any case she's doing amazing <laughs> so right now she can read pretty much any cvc word um and we're just going through um i've talked about this before but our absolute favorite program is uh core knowledge has free downloadable curriculum online and their kindergarten skills section i think she's in unit three of that or four i'm not really sure but um that's all about learning to read and I absolutely love it. I used it for both my kids and my son is a completely fluent reader right now. I could give him, you know, any chapter book at all and he could read it. Um, you know, he doesn't stumble over his words or anything like he, he's got it. So I really, really love this program and it's free. So <laughs> I really like that. I just have it on my phone and then pull it up and we do that. And then I use banana letters, which I really love because they have um, like little word groups like ch and then also uh, separate so like this just like, and they're separated like vowels are all yellow um b and d are different colors just to be you know clear on that and it's just really nice and she is man <laughs> she has really blown me away for sure so she can read this whole book which again is very basic but um I was still very impressed so this is just cvc words that she can read um, with some sight words mixed in. And she did really good on those sight words too. I'd have to tell her like once and then she had it. So, um, and I really feel, I don't know. It's just really, <laughs> really great. So we will be doing more of those soon. I think we have the whole Leapfrog set that we will read. And then we have a bunch of other readers and we're gonna keep on going with our uh, core knowledge language arts and yeah. So she is, she's really impressed me. And then she's also almost done with her uh, Dimensions Math uh, KA. And this is uh, part of Singapore Math. And we are really loving it. I think she just has one short little section left. It's very easy though. Um, I will say the penmanship, both of my kids, penmanship was not something that they would like do. Uh, this is my handwriting, so don't judge it. But um, I try to sometimes get her to write herself. And let's see if I probably have to find an earlier one. So yeah, so like here I would write in yellow marker and then she would have to trace over it type of thing. But these books were very easy and I knew that going into it. Um, I just thought because she was so young, we would start at kindergarten um, A and C. With my son, I skipped this section and went straight to KB. Um, but I think they're just fun little activities. And I'm not sure she really gained that much knowledge from it, um, other than she knows basically, she's very good at finding what a 10 is and everything like that. She's very good at that. Like she, I think despises counting and really tries to do the shortcut for everything. So if she sees that something is eight and then she can look and be like, oh, well then that one must be six. And this one, you know, so she, she makes really logical choices and I definitely think she's ready for the next one. So we have that one and she should finish this week. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of it for her. And then let's talk about my son. So he is doing, yeah, so we finished 1B, which we were on forever. Um, and honestly, I think it's more my fault. I think, I think I'm really resistant to going slow in school. Uh, you know, when it gets to the point where it's like, come on, write down the answer. You got this. And now it's like, I just have to time it. I just have to time it and like, make him do it. Say, okay, you have five minutes for this page, go. 
okay, now five minutes for this page, go. Um, because, man, my kids are pokey sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so now we're finally in 2A, and so far it's very, very easy. It's just um, place value and stuff. And, yeah, very easy. And it's been fun. We'll see if it stays, if it stays easy. Um, and, yeah, and so far he has... We've made it so that we do 2A together. Look, we do the textbook together, which I think is how it's meant to do, be done, but we have previously never done that. And then he does the workbook all by himself. So, and that's kind of been nice too, so that I don't have to help them. And then I can do her math while he does his workbook. And that works out nicely, which again, I'll try to show you guys all that in like a homeschool with me or a day in the life, whichever one you prefer. Uh, I'll probably have a poll on that on like the community tab. So, if you feel really strongly, be sure to look out for that so you can vote on that. Um, but yeah, and then explode the code. He's on seven. There's only one more and he's, I don't know, three quarters of the way done with this. Maybe not that much. He's, he's mostly done with this. And this one's fun because they do add crosswords to it now. So that is really nice. And then I said I was going to show you guys this. This is my handwriting, so... Um, but this is, uh, now they have reading comprehension, which I think is a little bit redundant, but I do think it's helping with like skills. Eventually he's gonna have to take standardized tests with this type of questions. And and yeah, I think that's good. Um, so right now how we do it is we do a lesson a day, which is eight pages. So it's kind of a lot, but honestly, I just wanna get done with this. Um, so I help him with the first seven and I just write it all out for him. Um, and he just tells me what to say and that is fine. And then he does the test, or in the last case, it was a crossword puzzle, uh, which is just like, kind of like a little spelling test. Um, yeah, and I think it's working out really well. Like I said, we're almost done with this. I think we'll finish this this week, and then uh, we'll move on to eight. So that'll be exciting. Um, okay, and then I wanted to share with you guys, I think I've shared with this, this with you guys before, um, but this is Doodle Adventures. I the second one just came in the mail and I would show you it, but um, he's he's writing in it right now. So, um, But yeah, it's really fun. You get to add little parts to the story and it tells you what to draw and how to help or whatever, like you have to draw things in. And I think that's so fun. Um, he absolutely loved the first one. He's been begging for the second one for so long and I finally just went and got it for him. Just cause there's only three, I think, in the series and he's gonna be really sad when he gets to the end. Um, but yeah, so I highly suggest that. And then let's talk, well, we'll talk about these and then, um, I have computer school stuff to talk to you guys about. Um, I know I've shared Dragon Masters with you guys before, but we really do love them. Um, this is about the level, it says second grade. Um, I do, it's more words though than like some of the other, this is the Branches series of Scholastic and there, there's a little bit more text per page than the other ones. And it says it's, but it's definitely like second grade level. It's very easy for him. Um, and he likes it a lot. So yeah, I highly suggest it. And it comes with, uh, we recently got this from the library too, which hold on, let me show you. So this is the guide. And as you guys know, my son absolutely love guidebooks. He could read, he reads his Mario guidebook, like nothing else and Pokemon guidebooks and Dungeons and Dragons guidebook. Hopefully you guys didn't hear that, but Anyway, this one is very colorful and tells you all about the different dragons and areas and dragon masters. And yeah, I like this one a lot. Okay. And then let's talk about, okay, Beast Academy is going really well. We're in an evens and odds unit that I think is really fun. And, and yeah, I think it's really good. I think it could be our main math, honestly, at this point but I just don't want there to be any gaps. I think I have a really big hang up on <laughs> math and I do like Singapore. I think it is making him like quicker with his math facts and really practice them more. But the real learning that takes place is from Beast Academy for sure. He's way ahead of Beast Academy. He's almost done. I think he's in two nine and there's 12 units um, in that. And then really two is meant to be done after second grade. So it's more like third grade work. Um, they say that the course is for 8 to 13. So, um, 
but yeah so I really, really like it. It teaches him really, really well. He just watches a video and can do it pretty much all by himself. Uh, sometimes I help him and yeah, and they have a bunch of fun logic puzzles and stuff. I have a whole video on it. I probably need to do an update because they have changed some things and like added some things, but yeah. Um, so that is going really well. And then the other thing online that he does every day is Night Zookeeper and we absolutely love this one as well. I, I know I say this every time, but it, it really is really great. I have noticed though, that he does a lot more reading or um yeah pretty much just reading on it as opposed to like reading what other people post or other things um in the comments of other people as opposed to typing himself so I think what we need to do is one day a week which I don't think I've said this before and if I did then I have not implemented it yet <laughs> um but hopefully this week um we're gonna do it sometime during the week both of us are going to sit down with Night Zookeeper and pick some sort of project. Either we're posting to like the community forum or we're going to do any of the bunch of prompts that they have um, because I think we really need to get to start writing more. Um, yeah, but I think he, we do really like it. I, I don't know if he's just behind in writing or um, compared to his level and everything else or if like he's just not used to typing or if you know writing's just not as fun as the other things I'm not sure um but I would like to add more writing to our like schedule and stuff so uh we are going to be doing that I did try to do it these past couple weeks but I keep setting it for Friday and then Friday gets so busy <laughs> so uh that's kind of I don't, I don't think that's the best thing so maybe I'll just set it for a straight middle of the week Wednesday and then we just do it on Wednesday um, but who knows? So that's kind of that. Oh, and then another thing that he's been really, really loving is RPG Maker, right? Yeah, RPG Maker. It's like a computer program that you can make your own video games, which, you know, he's obsessed with video games and that's what he really wants to do is be a video game maker. And he's been spending all of his free time, all of his electronics uh, time doing that. So he has made it really cool. I'll try to show you guys that also in our day in the life or homeschool with me or whatever. Um, because if you have another kid that really likes that, I really, really suggest it. It's so much fun. It looks like a Pokemon game type of thing where it's little characters and they move just like a Pokemon game. So, um, and it looks, looks really cool. Um, okay. And now we have recommendations. So I still want to suggest the Black History um, whole playlist on Pinna. It's a like podcast service and they have a bunch of books and podcasts and it's really, really good. Highly suggest it. Um, and then I also wanted to suggest um, for books. Let me get them out. Okay. Some new favorites for us. This is actually an old favorite. So I think I've shared it before. I've definitely shared it on Instagram, I think. <laughs> um, and this is the oldest student, How Mary Walker Learned to Read. I... My daughter is in love with these illustrations. Every time we read a book by her, she needs to cut out paper and make her own illustrations out of paper like this. And oh my goodness, this one is so inspiring. It's about a woman that uh, she grows up or she's she was born into slavery and she lives to be 128 or something, 121 maybe. And she doesn't learn to read till she's like 100. And it's just crazy it's just crazy um but it's such a fun story and i highly recommend it um, and then we have harlem's little blackbird the story of florence mills this was also really beautiful and i love like folk arty illustrations like this um and it was so nice and we would get to we got to like listen to some youtube videos after this and that was nice too um and then uh, this one is I Am Jackie Robinson. This is by a white author, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I love this whole series. I think he has such a way with words. He makes me cry literally every time. Um, and they're all, like even at the Disney one, which you wouldn't think would make you cry, but my goodness, which I do cry easily. I will say that. <laughs> but um, I absolutely love this one. And my, my son, my son, my brother <laughs> loves Jackie Robinson. So uh, growing up, we had so many Jackie Robinson books and things and yeah, it's, I really liked this one as well. Um, and then let's see. Okay. So as far as black history shows, there is a, sorry, there's a great, uh, John Henry 
show on Netflix that's like, it's a Disney short. So if you look, search under Disney shorts and then I think it's like the very first one though is all about John Henry and it's so fun. Um, and then Kevin Hart has a Netflix special that's like two years old maybe, um, all about black history and it showcases the really like fun, exciting, um, like people that fought back and in crazy ways and it's so funny. Um, there is like very light language but it is PG um, and I really liked that one as well. We watched that one. And then I have one game to share with you guys. So this one does not have anything to do with black history, but I do really love it. <laughs> um, and this is Parks. Um, and my goodness, is it beautiful. So you can play it even by yourself. It's one to five players, 10 and up, 40 to 70 minutes. So it is kind of a long game. It's definitely not a beginner game for sure. Um, it does say 10 and up, but my son can play and my daughter plays on my team and she gets how to play. Um, I don't think she would make the best like strategic choices or anything. Um, but uh, keep in mind, my kids are more advanced and we play board games a lot. So they are definitely not board game newbies. But my goodness, all the pieces are so beautiful. I don't know if you can see all the cards are so beautiful, but you basically um, have to walk your way through and you kind of have to decide. Um, there's benefits for getting done first, but there's also benefits for taking a slow path, walking through the, the um, national parks and getting all the things. Um, it's just... It's just really fun and thematic and there's lots of cool things to think about and there's so many different ways to win like different strategies to get points that is definitely in my kind of game i think i love this game the most in my family um but yeah i just love it <laughs> absolutely love it um but yeah so i think that was it yeah i think i, I talked long enough for sure <laughs> um i'm sure i forgot some things and i'm sure I babbled on for too long about other things, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, I am trying to get better about replying in the comments. So uh, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to get back to you. Um, I appreciate you guys so, so much. Uh, like this video if you did like it and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already and I'll see you guys in another video.